you get into a conversation with two filmmakers, a Kenyan one, Judy Kubinge, and an Angolan Portuguese one, Zhao, Zhao. John, he said, I may, we may call him John. Zhao? Joao Viana. And um, they're going to talk about Tobato, a village of peacemakers in Guinea-Bissau. And in the conversation, highlight the interconnectedness of, uh, interconnectedness of literature and cinema. So uh, Judy, please take it away and enjoy. And just a reminder, please um, have your phones on silent again so that we may have an interrupted uh, fun. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and good evening, Joa. It's just really lovely to be here, and it's been a real treat uh, beginning to delve into your work, something that we're really grateful that you're going to share with, with all of us this, this evening. Um, your work's been called many things. It's been called poetic. Um, it's been called haunting. <laughs> and... We're hoping that you can give us an introduction to the way you see and describe the kinds of films that you make. Uh, so the kinds of film that, that I make? Okay. How would you describe the okay. films you make? So first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you to Anya. Thank you to the festival. And <laughs> and to Armstrong, that it's amazing, this guy, <laughs> always in the right angle. <laughs> and thank you to you, Judith. So, yes, how I describe myself, my films. Um, it's... Mm, uh, I make African film, uh, African cinema, and normally was in, in the... Uh, bio, because I was born in 66, so in 66 everything happens. It was the first African film called uh, The Black Girl uh, from Sam Benu's band, The Lion of the African Cinema. And uh, it was an important year also, 66, because Senghor se uh, defined the three objectives of the African art. They said that Africa art needs identity, rhythm, and repetition. So, and then appears the, the African cinema, uh, that is very special. Normally there are three types of cinema. We are the, three t the third cinema. The first cinema, it's, it's the cinema of Hollywood, the entertaining. And then the second cinema, it's the cinema d'auteur, fr uh, French cinema, more uh, serious. And we are in between, entertaining and serious. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And so I, I made African cinema. Okay. And maybe you could tell us uh, a little bit about the, the, the style of, of the way you make films. I was very fascinated to read that his, um, he works in a very unusual way. And that is, you make a feature length film. And within that same framing, and it, you, know, you, you also make a short film. Um, and when I saw these two, I was somehow expecting to see an interpretation or a shrinking of this feature-length film into a short, and I was surprised it wasn't, wasn't quite this. Um, maybe you could just tell us, like, you know, this film that we are going to see being the short, um, and a larger one existing. What is, is this a philosophy that you have? Is this just the way you like to work? How did it come about? I, I think that happens because um, when I was a child, um, normally the distributors of cinema in, in Angola, they show, they show always um, uh, a documentary, and then a short, and then the feature. Always. Mm. And for me, this was a kind of school, you know? So, and for me, if I made a film, a feature film, I need, obviously, to make a short. And because it's like that. It's, you know, <laughs> it's natural. But, but what's the process of that? Do you have this idea for a short film first, and then 
it expands. I think many, many filmmakers um, who at times are looking for financing, at times will begin by doing a short and, and will hope that a producer will find or see this short and, and, um, and be able to develop a feature. But I don't get the feeling that this is not what you are, are doing. How? Well, it, dep it depends of the context of the country where I shoot. It depends of the, of the work. So in this case, in Guinea-Bissau, when I made the Battle of Tabatu, I, ma I, I made first this fiction, and then I made the, the, the feature that is a documentary. So the short, it's a feature. It, the, the short, it's a fiction, and the, 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 the feature, it's a, it's a fiction. Ah. It's a documentary, sorry, sorry, sorry. Short yeah. fiction and feature documentary. And, but it depends, because in, 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 the, in Mozambique it was, uh, it, was, it was more complex, because I sh I, I, in Mozambique it was with um, a film called Our Madness. It was in a psychiatric hospital, and I shot a woman and this woman was uh, in this hospital, and in the short version, she is mad. And in the feature, she is not mad. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And so, when you you shoot this way, or or when you tell a story in this very you know with such duality, um, how literally, what is that process like with the actors? You know, do you finish your short and put that to bed, or do you have them reading, you know, um, performing the scenes in a certain sequence? Because those are really two different films in, in, in many ways, even though the theme within which they sit is, is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, with actors, it's, a, it's, a, it's another world, no? Yeah. With actors, um, yeah, we have to go very carefully with them and explain very, yeah. Normally I direct my actors, uh, not uh, talking, but with whisper, with, uh, with secrets. Mm. Because it's very hinting. And we have always a, a team mm. around us but it's not. Uh, it's it's more comfortable comfortable for them if we talk uh, uh, very close to them and explain. But it's and it's very and cr th that creates always a, um, a kind of a very close relation between us. And it's, so we have to. Uh, I explain very. I don't have secrets for them mm. normally and. But each, per each actor, it's a person, and with a different character. So we can talk about actors. Mm. Each actor, it's a, so it's always, and normally I, I don't work with actors also. Sometimes, yes, it's more easy to uh, work with actors. But I, I love also to, with Tabatu, nobody was actor. Wow. Yeah. I think it's a, a good time maybe to um, ask you like how, would we best introduce this film? I think we have a, re a real treat tonight because we're going to see not one, but two um, of your short film, Madness, which you just mentioned, and, um, and Tabatu, which we'll see now. So maybe I could just ask you to introduce the film. Yeah. So the film, uh, I, was, I was assistant because I, I didn't study cinema. I was assistant, um, I didn't study, I didn't want to school. So I learned with uh, other directors. And I was assistant of um, a big director, a big, big master, was in, it's called Werner Schroeter. He was the director of the L'Opéra de Paris. So it was really a big master. And I was with him and we were very friends, close friends and he, um, he was in very sick in Germany, and I was with him because we made a film in Portugal, and I was his assistant, second assistant, not first, 
because it was a big, big production, and I, I was the assistant for the figurants. And um, but but then I, I I went with him to Germany, and he, he drank a lot also. It was difficult times, and um, and I was in Berlin, and one day he was really drunk, and I. A girl that was with me, my my girlfriend at the time, she broke uh, um, a, a bottle of of something of white wine, I think, and he was very furious and he said, "You have to to find another bottle." It was three in the morning, and we go and we went to Berlin <laughs> at three in the morning to find a bottle, and we find uh, something. And I meet at the time uh, a, a young musician that told me that his dream was a classic musician. He plays viol violin. Uh, that his dream was to go to Tabato in Guinea-Bissau to, to learn music. And for me, it was wow, because... Uh, so you met this guy literally when you went out to get this... The bottle. This replaced yes, 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 replacement bottle. Yeah. You didn't realize it was your life was about to change yes, that night, huh? A, yes, because it's the end of, of a period of. Uh, of I, I, I made at the time two short films. I was very happy with them, but now it was the first feature. It was a special moment, and I finished the film with Werner Schroter. So then I, it was a special moment also. And he told me that his dream was to go to Tabato uh, in Guinea-Bissau to learn uh, djembe, a special technique. And I said, wow, but uh, I never heard about... And I, in Guinea-Bissau talks Portuguese. I'm from Angola, we talk Portuguese talks. I never heard about Tabato. And he, ex he explained me where, he, where the village was. So, and I, and I was also producer. A little producer, so I, it was easy for me to find money to this and to study, because it's very important in cinema if someone gives us money to study our subject, because cinema we have we have to know what I what are we doing. You know? So I, I went to Guinea Bissau to study this village, and, and it was very difficult to find a village because the, the country was in war at the time and and it was um, and nobody knew about that because it was a village Mandinga and there are 25 tribes in, in, in Guinea-Bissau so but finally I find and uh, and that's it <laughs> and I, I, I lost my head Completely, because it was really uh, very people from Griots. Very uh, Griots. It's it, you know what Griots means. It's people that have the knowledge in the memory, and they have all the knowledge. <laughs> they, it's wonderful to talk with people like that because they they. They talk with you, but they can go uh, centuries in after. <laughs> so, and this was Griot's musicians. It's a special of a special because we can have Griot's gene genealogists that that know the story of your family, all the story of your family. But this Griot's was um, Griot's from musicians that have a kind of esoteric knowledge. It's kind of bibliotheques, but bibliotheques of a kind of esoterism, secret knowledge that they don't teach, especially they don't teach to strange people. So, <laughs> and for me, this was really important because in my family there are writers, and I love the African literature, of course, but uh, I think, but the, the African literature began 
in 19, I think, no? Uh, it depends on the countries. But the, 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 tra the oral tradition in, in, in Guinea-Bissau goes, it, it's not the, the 500 years of colonialism, it's, it's the 3,000, 3, 300,000 years of the history of, of, of this territory, Mandinga, no? So it's really a big, a huge, a huge tradition. So, yeah. I live there. I lost my hair and, and I, I, I live here. And then we make first this fi film that we are going to see. And then uh, this, this is a fiction. And then we made a documentary. And yeah, that's it. Okay, it'd be wonderful if we could see it. Yeah? Do you think now is a good time? I think so. Yeah? Let's, um, let's see the film. Sir, was. Uh, really a victim of the sickness of the father and uh, yes and the uh, village really helps this man to forget these sounds of war that here he hear with these objects so i, di I didn't invent nothing <laughs> sorry yes. wow actually i'll be honest when we watched this film last night with my husband we had a lot of different interpretations for it. Um, I finished watching it once, I thought, hmm. <laughs> I watched it again, and I think what came out for me was, was really the feeling of, of someone who is going through trauma, but I had no idea that, you know, of this method that, that you, you're speaking about. I read somewhere that you arrived there with no script. Is, is that true? So maybe could you just tell us a little bit more about these characters and, um, and these true stories that you somehow put together and created this, this short film with? Mm. So this man um, used to live in Portugal because in the war, uh, 36 years, years ago, he fights against his own people because the Portuguese in the in the war uh, with Guinea-Bissau, they invent a, a very cruel thing. They invent an army, a, a African army, to fight against the Africans. You know, it was not the Portuguese fighting to the, the Guinea-Bissau people, but it was the part of the people of Guinea-Bissau fighting against his own people. And this guy made this. And of course, this guy is called Mutar. It's a very important man. It's a, it's a griot. And then, he, he, in the end of the war, he, 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 he ran away to Portugal. And then he came back. But when he came back, uh, he, he was sick. And now it's is is a normal person, not a normal person because it's a very is a griot, but um, now we don't have problems. So this that is, that makes it into. So are you saying that really even the objects in the suitcase are real yeah. objects that 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 particular character owns and carries around? Uh, no, no. Specifically, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, he has objects that he showed me, Mutar, but I didn't like the objects that he had. Uh, so I, it, uh, um, we create these objects, but inspired in the objects that he had, because it was not very beautiful, the objects that he had. And this is not beautiful too, but <laughs> it's, it's more suggestive, more expressive. And this, for me, was important. So, yeah. So I'm just packing, you know, unpacking and unraveling all the things that we were speaking about. And I'm trying to imagine um, you in Berlin one night, <laughs> off to buy a bottle of wine. That's a simple task. Bumping into this man, who tells you about this place that you've never been to and a village 
in the middle of a country, in the middle of war, and that night you say, aha, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. And I really am fascinated about how you arrive at this place that you've never been, you know, stay with this, and, and begin to identify and find these characters and all these different stories. I, I'd love it if you could just share with me and share with us so, what that was like. Yes, thank you. Did you arrive by yourself? Uh, yes, in the beginning, yes. I began, to, I, 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 I came, because I, I, yes. And then, and then with the time I came with a team. But not a, a big team, because we work uh, only special, I, I need someone very good for sound, that I, I, I and I, I don't find in, in Guinea-Bissau, I didn't find. So, and a very good guy in the organization. And three, uh, three collaborations only from Portugal. The rest, it's uh, even the, 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 the DOP, the camera, that it's very important in cinema, it's from Guinea-Bissau. I think, but for me, it's really the creative process that I'm very curious about, even before, you know, the team arrived before you found... Uh, before the, that, like, yes. Like, what is it? I'm trying to imagine myself arriving, for instance, in your country, in Angola, and knowing nobody, and beginning to weave this story of... Wh where did you find these people? How did you find um, these characters? What, what is it that was going on your, in your mind as it led up to, to creating this, this, this film? Where did all... The magic happened. How did it happen? So, uh, yes. Mm, in the beginning, it was a little, it's a deception. I can, I, I can say because find Tabato, a small uh, tabanka in the middle of Guinea-Bissau, it was difficult. But then, when I arrived to Tabato, it was deception because it was a tabanka, like a village, like many others. No difference between the village and... Um, but then I realized that everybody was a musician with the time, because then I lived there. And, and, and with the time, I realized that it was really a, a village of musicians. And, and this was, for me, uh, wonderful, no? Um, and they win money uh, playing music for the other the other villages uh, in marriage or but they are really great artists in the in the in the village of Tabato that play in other countries around Guinea Bissau. There are Yaya, for instance. It's one of the most important dancers in, and musicians in Ballet du Senegal, Ballet, National Ballet of Senegal. There was a, another one, um, who, there was an, another one, it's uh, uh, Morango, that's, that's, that has a, uh, is musician in Canada, but comes very, Tabatu, it's a kind of center mm. of Mandingas that, and there are many connections. So, and then, and then talking and staying a lot of time with pa African patients, you know, long talking and not eating because we didn't eat a lot. Because every time we drink um, a special tea, called warga with a lot of sugar saturated with the sugar yeah and uh, we drink this and we can play music all night and we don't have angry so but at the same time i re uh, people don't have the re resistance in the legs that they don't can be in feet many times you see when f uh, I, I saw s with Fatou, when Fatou dance, it's not a very ener in, in, uh, energetic dance. No, she's, she's very, 
she's not strong when she dance because the because uh, it's what was like that now the village is better but at the time in 2013 it was like this so in the process it's easy it's uh, talking with each other <laughs> it's interesting watching um, the feature film I think the characters are you know quite defined you know the film begins and you know for instance don't tell. <laughs> it's but yes, I mean, the characters are, are, are defined from the beginning. There's no secret, actually, yes. that needs to be held because, you know, you can tell that he is a griot and he's a famous singer. You can tell, you know. But in this, it's, it's all left to, it feels, the viewer to almost decide who these people are or decide if there is a relationship between them or not. Is that intentional? No, no, it's not. It's your, mm. it's your professional eyes, <laughs> I think. Yes, because you are my colleague. And I, I wish to see your films, mm. your Kenyan films. That's a cryptic <laughs> answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's not intentional. No, yeah. no, no, no. When we made films, and uh, what I love in African cinema, it's we have always a space to, to the viewer. Because cinema, only cinema, it's not sufficient. Cine cinema is really important, of course, because it's a space, a very intimate space, but at the same time, public space, and this makes a crush in our brain and make, makes us better people. That's why it's so important. But in African cinema, we don't tell everything. And we don't, like in American cinema, that we think in, in, in films of net, Netflix that everything it's thinking, the emotion at th three seconds, we know <laughs> that uh, people are going to laugh or people are going to cry. Here, no, it's, there's a space to the intelligence of the, the, the audience. Mm. And it's the intelligence of the audience that makes the, the film, not the film, because this is nothing, it's light. Mm. Uh, it's, it's something in between. That, that makes the, yeah. so it's not intention. Mm. Do you always shoot in, in black and white or? Always, yes. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about, I, I felt um, very gripped by this red that, that the, came in the middle of the, yeah. the film and kind of threw me into a sense of, of you know, of war and of trauma. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that, that treatment. The red is the only color that I see. I'm colorblind. I'm dressed with the colors that I, I know. I, I, I don't see this red in my... In, in, I don't see this red, but when I, I look to the desert in, in Angola, the desert of Namib, and I look to the sand, I see the red. And it's a beautiful color. <laughs> it's the only color that I see, of course. But, I, but it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I can. I don't. I don't have. Comp I don't know if. So, but but for me, it's very beautiful. The red, and um, and I, I use the red to when there are important moments. Uh, it's like uh, a writer when a writer wants to sublime certain things mm. or put in bold. It's a kind of bold, <laughs> yeah, for me. So it's a kind of a very signature. That's fascinating as well, um, you know, being a filmmaker who sees the world in, in a certain way and, and has chosen your color, you know, the one you it's see color, yes. to be present in, no, but in, in your in, films. In, yeah, but, but I read, I, I, don't, I don't know where I read this, but. Uh, the, for the, the, the Egyptians called the black girl to, to Cairo, and they called to the desert the, the red, the red, not the red girl, Avramalia, the red girl, the red girl. Mm. It's strange, no? Called the city, black girl, and, and the desert, the red girl. Mm. Yeah. So it's very African, this, I think. 
but it's, it's, this is a past concept, of course, because, but I, I, I was very happy when I read this, <laughs> because it's the only color I see. Yeah. yeah I don't know if the, the yeah. audience want to make questions, no. Or we, we, we show? Yeah, but I, I want to ask you another um, okay, sorry, sorry, just sorry. quick question, just, you know, before we uh, sorry, perhaps sorry. watch the next film. Yeah, sorry, um, sorry. I am curious about your influences, um, and, and maybe because I, I was, you said Netflix, and I was <laughs> watching um, quite a famous costume designer on, 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 on a show the An other African, night. An African and one? The African-American. A uh, woman who, and, and she was saying that people imagine that her influences would be painters or would be um, colors or, or, or would be certain designers, but her influences were very much um, literature and, 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 and poems and playwrights. And, and I'm just curious if there are, especially with your deep love of history um, of Africa, if there were uh, writers that deeply influence you or or what your influences are yeah it's mm, what I, I say to my students because sometimes I, I made workshops and I said what I teach them it's that cinema we learn to make cinema with the other arts with the other sixth arts this is the 17th art so Reading and uh, and seeing painters and listen to music, good music, and uh, we 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 learn how to make cinema with this. Yeah, it's very inspiring. The other, so and uh, the African writers are are very important for me. Mm. Mm. I can say because there are some African art writers here, but for me, yeah. I like Jean Marie Villanova. It's a, 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 a poet from Angola. I, I, I like him a lot. Yes. Okay. Now I'm wondering if we should um, ask the audience if they have questions for this particular film before we move on okay. to the next. I think that would be pretty good rather than, than saving them up all for the end. Uh, so we will turn it over. I can see Margareta's hand is up. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, you've obviously um, spent a lot of time and given a lot of thought to this this short film. I, I wondered about the girl, because what wasn't clear to me was um, her opening this box, and where did that take you? The next time we saw her, she was dancing very vigorously, and then the next time we saw you, her, she was dead. So, uh, what, what happened? I, I wasn't clear about that. Forgive me, but maybe you can help me? Yes. There are a lot of ellipses, no? There are a lot of spaces, non-narrative spaces, no? Like this, no? Mm. It's you. You have, you have to find yourself. Cinema is like that. I have an explanation, but I, I don't know if it's the right explanation, too. Sometimes I, I talk with myself about my films. It's true. But for me, it's especially the second one. The second one that we are going to see, ooh, I, 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 I talk, I, I, I made a lot of questions to myself. But this one, it's, for me, it's um, a little bit more uh, clear. So she opens, the, the father come, she opens the, the box, she finds this, and obviously the father was not happy because his own box and a, a, a daughter don't have the right to see, to open the box of the father. So in this, the third plan, we see the, the, the blood in the... We see that the father is not with the, 
with the, the girl and we see blood in his hand. And then, because, and he show the hand with blood to the fiancé, the, 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 the guy that is going to marry with her. And then in the fourth plan, she's dancing uh, full of blood. She's a kind of metaphoric dance, maybe you can understand like that. And then it's, she's dead. Yeah. And the drama here is that the, the guy that is going to marry with her helps the, the father <coughs> to be uh, healthy again. But someone, some, some people understand what, yeah, the film don't belongs to nobody, belongs to each person that see, no? It's like a book. There's no, uh, no, that's why it's so, it's a wonderful art, no? because it's public, it's, it's free. <laughs> So you have the right to do, don't agree with me. If you don't agree with me, I'm okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, my question is, uh, the topic is to check the interconnectedness of literature and cinema, and you're talking about maybe coming to that country without a manuscript. Yet, maybe in uh, that country, or many, maybe Kenya or any other country, we have existing work in, of literature and stories that maybe you can adopt for the screen. Do you have any plans to look out of some interesting stories that can be adopted for the screen? Very. I don't know, many, many words to describe it. Can you tell us something about it? Like, no, uh, there are where you shot it, why, what ah. led to this? Like, what inspired you to make this film? Uh, it was Mozambique. It's always, yeah, it, will, it, will, it was always the country that inspired, you know? And Mozambique, I, 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 I live a, more, five years in Mozambique, so... And I, I made a alone a big travel, taking notes and taking notes from Maputo to to Ilha de Moçambique in the south. It's more than three thousand kilometers. So and this comes. I don't know. <laughs> this is, is is it's not a documentary. It's a fiction. It's pure fiction. But I think it's it's. Connected with country, yeah. for me, it's, yeah. is it set in a in a real asylum though? It's set, no. Is, is the location? Ah, okay. It's set in the location. Yes, 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 yes. Of course, this exists. It's a, a psychiatric hospital, uh, and we spend a lot of time here. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm interested in, um, I guess, in language, you know, the, the first film, making the first film took you um, to a country that, you know, spoke the same, same language, um, Portuguese, and this next film, again, um, is set in, in Mozambique, and it's, it, you know, it's interesting how, I suppose, these colonial languages separate us in, in, in so many ways and, and create these, these identities. And I, I just wondered if, as a filmmaker, especially with all the different places that you shoot, if you've ever considered shooting in an Anglophone um, or Francophone country? Yes. Um, I don't know. I think cinema, it's topographic, no? Each, each... A country needs its own cinema, and each place needs its own storyteller. So, 
I'm not from Kenya, you know, or I'm not from another. So, but if there are young people and new, new storytellers that uh, is going to tell the stories of Kenya and, and Anglophone countries and Francophone countries, but as you see, there's no Portuguese here. <laughs> there's no colonial language here. No. Yeah, no. This is another thing that I discovered uh, traveling uh, uh, around Mozambique. It's nobody talks Portuguese. Mm. Ah, outside Maputo. Outside Maputo, even in Maputo, we talk Changana. Ah, it's a kind of, but maybe. Maybe someone from Mozambique. Anyone from Mozambique in the house? Mm -hmm. no. no, not tonight. <laughs> not tonight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you say that? Uh, no, it's near. It's near Maputo. This, uh, this. Uh, Gaza, 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 or where? Uh, it's near Maputo. It's really neighborhoods of Maputo. Yeah. yeah, the neighborhood of Maputo is a Gaza. Gaza, yeah, but Gaza it's more. Um, to a little to the north, yeah. Yeah, it's very. It's it's not. It's, um, okay. It's, anyway, it's there is Machangani, I think. Yeah, Changana. Yeah, people talk Changana. I think that's the language they use. That, that's their traditional language, yeah. But uh, I was in Tete for a long time and other places, but if the educated people, they, they speak it. They speak Portuguese. Of course, yes. Portu yeah. and, and in television, it's Portuguese that uh, yeah, the newspapers yeah. are in Portuguese and the writers write in Portuguese and books. Okay, it's yes, the same. Portuguese is, is the language that, but there are so many beautiful languages in Mozambique. That, uh, uh, that is true. There, is, there are yeah. about 12 languages, different mm. languages, I think. Mm. Um, and they are all very interesting, but they are um, Bantu, uh, mainly Bantu in the north, in the south. It's, um, I don't know, the, the border also is Swatini, Swaziland. So the language spoken in sometimes they cross, yes. yeah. but they understand one another. Yeah. And, and sometimes the same person, the, per the same person, talk different language during the day. Two, three, four languages. If we, and even in the same conversation, we can change language. This is so rich, no? <laughs> it happens here too. Yeah, yeah. People jump between languages. So. Mm. I wanted to ask you if, um, again, in this tradition that you have of, of making short films and then these larger uh, feature films, if this has a companion, does Madness have a feature film yes, course, companion? Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. One is called Madness, the other is called Our Madness. It's more, yeah. In this film, she is mad. She is really mad because when she she's in the bed and then she sees her son in red. And we, we don't understand if it's her imagination or not. And then she left the, the bed, she goes to, to, to the open space of the hospital and the guy <coughs> from the hospital climbs uh, uh, the wall and see the same image, but not in red. And he said, I don't see nothing. And we don't know where we are. We don't know. Maybe she's lying, he's lying. Why he said, I don't see anyone. Yeah. Even for me, it's a kind of mystery. Even for you? Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. And this is very African in the, when we, it, it's very, uh, that's why we are different from mm. the other, the rest of the world.
because this, it's, it's a very old tradition. Even the Egyptians, sometimes they didn't know what, what are, they are doing when in these painters. Mm. Yeah. Of course, I know what I'm doing, but I don't know everything. Mm. No, I don't control everything. Yeah. Which is a lot like life. Sorry? Which is a lot like life. We see so many things that every day that we, we make stories about, but we don't really know everything about. Yeah. Could I turn it to you guys and, and ask if um, you have questions or comments or observations? I think what I'm intrigued by is the, what I think is the common factor in both films about trauma or, I guess, mental health. I want you to speak, I would like you to speak a bit more about that, or if that was even a consider, um, intentional for you. I, re I, I remember that when I was a child, I was very afraid to be mad. When you were a child, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was a real, a really, yeah. I discovered here in this festival that uh, one thing I can say that that writers had a, a, a very happy childhood, and filmmakers have a very sad childhood. It's our difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but madness, yeah, it's true. Mm, I can say that I, I was, I was in, in my childhood, I was very. Mm, I listened to sounds in the house, and then, and then many sounds, everything began with sounds. And then um, I went to school, and in, in the house with sounds, it was a, a, a kind of paradise. And then my mother sent me to school, and it was a nightmare, because I was the only white. And, uh, the, and I refused to learn, and my mother was a teacher, a young teacher and she starts to beat me, and I run away from, from the school, and I, I, I went to the cinema. And in cinema it was wonderful, five miracles occurred. The first miracle was the screen was not black, was white, and I said, this is for me. <laughs> and there, there was no teacher, and the second, Thing, the sound was really important, more important than the image. And for me, I was familiar with the sound. Third miracle was um, uh, when the, the lights uh, closed, I became black. And this was really good for me. And uh, Fourth thing, everybody was afraid in cinema, and I understood that was a light projecting in the screen, and nothing to be afraid. It's everything, it's, it's light and sound. And the fifth miracle was, there was many films, but white stories, always white stories and European and American stories and not African stories. And, and, I, and with, with five years, I, I said, I'm, I'm going to make films. But then the problem was, my father said, no, you, if you want to be an artist, you have to, you need to have the feet in the ground. And so I study law. Uh, and I finish, can you imagine? Yeah. 
but then but then um, I had many years I had afraid to be a little bit mad because I had madness in my family. I had uh, someone uh, an uncle completely mad, but very very polite. He, he plays vi violin. He didn't talk with nobody, but he, he was at a table. We had a, a big table for the family, and everybody discussed, and everybody have a bad behavior sometimes, and he was always polite and always in silence. And I said, oh my God, maybe I'm mad because I love him. <laughs> He's the only guy. So, yeah, and I have a little bit. For me, it's uh, something that, but I think I'm not. Hmm, <laughs> what do you think, Judith, guys? Come on, tell me, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Can I ask you to do something quite strange? Yeah. Not a mad thing, um, because I, I noticed the audience was seemed very tickled when they said that you studied law. Yeah. You know, I think it's um, it's interesting how, as artists and, and filmmakers, we are so many layers, we're so many things, and and you did a very interesting thing when we just met here an hour and a half ago. In a moment, you changed yourself. I, yes, I, I changed myself. Yes, I yes when, when, I, when I look for money, but I, this I, is very African too. When I, when I look for money, in, uh, I have to convince people. You know, we have to convince. I have a good story and you have to give me money. So, but uh, um, I can, I, I discover that um, Sometimes people don't take me serious with this uh, head, S especially white people, especially German people <laughs> and French people too. <laughs> and so yes, I, I take this. Not like this. I, I put a kind of gel, you know, and then I put my glasses like that. Like I mean, who are you? Serious, you know? <laughs> More serious, you know. <laughs> it's, I'm talking to a completely different person suddenly. Yes, yes. You have to respect me, yeah? No? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm yes. a liar. I'm scared, I'm scared. <laughs> okay, so once you ask about how to get the money, I think we now know we need to get some serious spectacles. Yeah? <laughs> serious shirts. <laughs> yeah. But to talk to me a little bit too about that, just about the, the process of, um, you know, what it's like to be filmmaker born in Angola, out in the West, you know, looking for money for African films, yeah. very unapologetically African films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good for an artist. It's always good if you have one fit in one place and one fit in another. But I think we all have the artists because we don't belong to nowhere, but to, we are in between. It's a kind of bastard, cultural bastard, Bastard, and that means that we have to create our space, and we create art. So, it's simple. Another question from the audience. I feel my first question was not answered about adopting to screen existing African stories. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And number two, we are in twenty-first century. The kind of technology that we have and maybe the reason why you choose to shoot your film in black and white, something we associate with maybe 1930. And right now when you go to cinema, we see things in 3D, good pixel, etc. Maybe what informs that decision to shoot your film in black and white? And two, we go back to my first question, adopting existing African stories to the screen. Okay, okay. So, mm, yes, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's wonderful when, when we adapt. But I don't like the, the word adapt, because it's different arts, you know. A, hist a good history exists in a book, and, and then we, we, we adapt <laughs> this history to cinema. But it's not adaptation, it's another, uh, another, 
uh, artistic uh, thing. It's not a kind of adaptation, it's another creation. When we, because if you give the same book, the same history to five Kenyan um, filmmakers, you have in the end five different films, completely. Because it's a, it's not a, it's not adaptation. It's a different pair of eyes. Yeah, it's a, a different art. Yeah, it's a different art. It's cinema, it's sound, eighty percent sound, and twenty percent image, and this, and everything. And it's not only that; it's other things. It's um, when sound and image are together, they it's not an addition. It's not cinema. It's not sound plus image. It's not that. It's dialectic. It's if you if you sh if you show an image, and then if you show a different a sound, a, a completely different sound, that makes other thing in your brain. You know, so it's very complex, and it's it's very sophisticated. It's something that. Very thing, something that um, illustrates the way our thinking. Because normally we think this, when we have conscience of some, something, everything is in black, around, and then we see a light. No? Mm -hmm. And this light, we think about what has happened here. And then when we go to, to black again, we go to inconscient. No? This is something, this is a kind of machine of thought. No? And many process of the viewers, when a viewer see a film, uh, there are many process uh, of thinking. First of all, uh, you normally you are connected with the protagonist. No? And in, your, in our brain, it's easy for us to go forward or go f or make a flashback. In our brain, it's really easy, no? And cinema illustrates this. That's why it's so, it's a pleasure to go to cinema. Because it's very human. Mm -hmm. So, adaptation, yes. Yes, because that world is, <coughs> There are wonderful stories, but personally, I, I, I think I'm com convinced. Of course, there are wonderful books and wonderful stories, but I'm convinced and wonderful writers. Yes. But I'm convinced there are five or six stories in the world, and reality is much more intense. I'm convinced about that. That's why I'm not a, <laughs> a writer and a, but a filmmaker. Mm. Yeah, I believe in reality. Reality is so powerful. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, but it's, but it's funny because it's in the books that we learn how to make cinema. It's reading that we, our brain think about cinema. Literature. It's the f if we if we make kind of hierarchy between the arts. Literature, it's the first one. And in literature, poetry. First poetry, then the big literature, it's, well, it's wonderful. What, what the writers create with, with histories and, and how. It's, so, it's more sophisticated than cinema. Cinema is very basic. It, in the end, that's why it's so we have so so much pleasure in cinema. But literature is very complex and very intense and very wow. And we have to read. That's what I say to my students. We have to read, not to because it's it's good for for everything. <laughs> we learn a lot with the, the books. So first literature. So so this is to answer to your question. I think. I have answer, no?
because I'm... He spoke, he spoke about that for ages. I'm, I'm colorblind. Yes, I'm colorblind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to be my assistant for colors? It's <laughs> <laughs> a question from the back. Um, no, no, thank you, that's a good question. No, I think cinema is more powerful when it represents present. It, when, when, when I, uh, sometimes with my young students, they, they have plans to make epoch films, films from, from the past and, yeah, but, it's this film, this specific film, it's, it's in our days, yeah. There's another question, two questions in the back. Hi. Uh, Hi. Oh, wow, this is loud. <laughs> Uh, thank you for sharing both those films. They're really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question about um, translation, but um, I, when you were talking about being colorblind and presenting these films in a way that matches essentially the way that you see the world, which is black and white with red, um, the thing that I was curious about was I, so I, I speak a, uh, uh, a bit of Portuguese, so I was listening to both, for the Portuguese in both languages, and the first film was Creole, mostly, and I don't even think that, I think it was entirely Creole and another language, and then the second film was also not Portuguese. So I'm curious about the fact that uh, when you look at it visually, you're presenting this world in the way that you see the world, but linguistically, you are essentially, even though you're the filmmaker, you're not you don't speak the language in the film, so it's almost like a part of the film is not accessible to you. Um, I don't know if that's an experience that you had, or I'm, I'm just curious about like your own experience of creating a film that is not in the language that you speak. Yeah, it's a good question. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's true. But I, uh, it's true that... Uh, that um, I don't understand everything. It's not my language, yeah. But with the time, because I spent five years to make each film. The first film that I made, it was in 2004, the second in 2009, the third in 2013, the fourth in 2018. I only made four films. Four films, but double, no? With the feature, no? And um, I spend a lot of time, of course, there. Then we, I, 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 I talk a little bit of Shangana, and I talk a little bit of Mandinga, of course, because I lived five years there. I forgot many things, but I, uh, I talk. <laughs> so. But uh, in the beginning, it was difficult, it's true. But with time, yeah, with time, I understand. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Hello. Uh, Hello. My question to you is about, uh, it's curious to know that you've been from Angola and you've gone to do films in other countries. How do you negotiate the element of otherness in a different culture, even within one uh, language really, in post-colonial cinema. And also, um, how much agency do you have from a different African country to tell a story from a different African country? Actually, could you just repeat that question again? I think that your first part, where you were asking about how he negotiates the feeling of otherness. Otherness. Is being yeah, when in a different a country, different from his own. In a post-colonial uh, literary cinema, where we are divided with borders, boundaries, even if we speak the same language, 
you, how do you negotiate as a filmmaker in an entirely different country, in a different culture, and also how much agency does your own viewpoint and reflection of you uh, give to the people that you film in a different country? Well, yeah, of course it's difficult, but with... Uh, mm, Mm, it's difficult. It's really hard, but at the same time, it's um, it's very inspiring. Filming in other countries, but these countries, it's not completely different for me because it's it's countries that I learn about all my life. When I was in Angola and I was very young, um, every time the radio uh, have there are news about, about Mozambique or about Guinea-Bissau. When I was young, you remember, I, I was born in 66. In 66, it was at all Africa was <laughs> starting. You're Kenya. Kenya was born in 63. So, but I remember, I remember that in, 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 a, a 60, in 60s, 50 new countries, uh, 50 new country, uh, African countries was born. And then in 70s, 70 new country, African countries was born. It was, everything was. So this is familiar for me. Not Kenya, it's the first time I'm here, of course, and I'm very happy. But Mozambique is a, 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 country, a brother country for me and Guinea-Bissau also. It's because I, I, I and, and, and also the writers, because, you know, it's literature, it's a big family. So I've, I, I've read a lot of authors from, from Mozambique or from, from Guinea-Bissau. Now I'm going to specialize myself in Cap Verde. And in, in what? Cap Verde and Santo May Príncipe. Uh, but w with books, we don't have time for it because it's <laughs> no. There are so much offer. We have to choose, and we have to. We need to have time. And, but sometimes, but we have. Yeah, we have to to read to to find in our day always a, a little moment to read. And, but you know, I don't agree with this post-colonial. I don't use, not agree, but I don't use this word, post-colonial. We, now we are in a new step. And there's a, a, a big discussion about that now, because there are studies in Latin America about colonialism, and they are very strong uh, in that, in, in, in colonial st uh, studies. And th this Ameri Latin Americans invent a new word that it's called decolonial, decolonial. And for me, uh, th there was a, a big discussion about this film because we, we some critics wrote uh, um, a study about, uh, they say that uh, the Batalha de Tabato is the first decolonial film in Lusophone countries. For me, it was, I, I was very happy with this. And, but this, this study makes, uh, made a, a lot of discussions about this because people don't agree. Why we, we use decolonial? Decolonial is Spanish. It's not Portuguese. Why? We have a word for that. It's descolonizar. Dis, uh, discolonial, discolonial. Why we are going to to find another word in Spanish? <laughs> but and but it's not a good discussion because the colonial it's not uh, it's not uh, this colonial. The colonial means that colonialism didn't hand. The process didn't end. We are now in the process. We, we are now fighting against the colonialism because it's there. 
it's here. So that's why post-colonial, it's not, we are not in post-colonialism. Oops, sorry, we, we can't quite hear you from up here. Uh, could, could we get him a mic? Sorry, I was thinking more in terms of, you speak the language, like Portuguese is a language, and you go to a country that speaks Portuguese, does that give you agency to be able to film in that country? Uh, in some, in the, my first question about post-colonial is really, is looking at the country like South Sudan, which is in my backyard, but still if I go there, as a Kenyan... Uh, sorry, I sorry, uh, uh, English is not my first, and not my second, not my third language, you know? You, you, you have to speak slowly, because I don't understand completely. Sorry, sorry. You have to speak a little bit more slowly. Well, my question really is, uh, speaking Portuguese, does it make y your work as a filmmaker much easier to film in Mozambique? Um, no, I, I shoot in Mozambique because when I was a child, Mozambique was really close to me. It was a brother country, and I, I, I many times I, I said, when I was sad in my country, I said, why I, we don't live in Mozambique? It was my dream country, you know, Mozambique, because in Mozambique was a, a, a lusophone country, but in Mozambique there was many beautiful beaches, and there was Many, and, ah, and in Mozambique, sometimes they use the English, that it's more fashion than Portuguese. <coughs> and uh, we, we, so it was very close to me, this country, you know? I never been in Mozambique uh, when I was a yeah, uh, child, but it was very near, because Angola, it's one side of Africa, and Mozambique, it's the other side of Africa, but there's no, it's close, but, far away from each other. The colonialists dream to, to, to make a point, uh, make a, a bridge between the two countries, can you imagine? So, so it was really close. That's why I, I think I'm allowed to, to, to film there, because it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a, I don't have problems in, in being from Angola and, and, sh and shooting there. Yes. Now, interestingly, when we started our conversation, I just thought, two hours? How? Wow. You know, are we going to fit it? And are we going to? And imagine we just have time for one more question. <laughs> yeah? So who can we have that? Our last closing question for the night from? There's a hand over there. Um, I, I had the assumption, and maybe I'm, that, because, because you mentioned uh, African film being non-narrative, non and this then allowing for this multiplicity of interpretation, but I had the assumption because we are oral, like, uh, oral literature driven, that narrative is actually very central. When the yeah. non-narrative form, does it work also in your more feature-length work? Um, uh, no, but I, I, I didn't say it. It's not narrative. But the, the, the stories that give us multiple interpretations, no? That you have, you see with your culture, your background, cultural background. You, there are many levels and you see, you can see the simple story, but then you can go to the, another level and see the metaphorical story, and then you, go, you can go and see the, 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 the little things that uh, makes the story more rich. So, yeah. Uh, we can, we, the net, but you know, when we think in the big masters of the, the, 
Universal Cinema. Hmm, we can see Glauber Rocha, for instance, from Brazil. Uh, no, it's not a good. I can say Chaplin. Chaplin comes from cinema, of course. But uh, Fellini came from circus. Uh, Alain Rajne came from sculpture. Uh, Antonioni came from music. Um, more. Straub came from uh, essay. Mm. Visconti came from romance, from the novel. Mm. And the African filmmakers came from the oral tradition. It's, it's our background, no? If we want to make cinema, we have to, to, to use our big oral tradition, you know? That nobody studied that. There are no studies about that. And every time that the old man in Tabato died, it's really a, a big accident because we lose a lot of knowledge that it's not in books, not in... Uh, so, yeah, we are really a complex continent. We are a continent of success, of a big success, because we are the continent mother, you know? It, it was in Africa that every degrees of evolution, human evolution, came, and then we colonized all the world. It was Africa, the first colonizer, no? And it was with a big success. Mm. And then the first civili uh, civil civilization was in, in Egypt, and then in Mali. But there's no many knowledge about this big civilization of Mali, but, you know. Mm. But our problem was we, we didn't need books because it was it's, it was our tradition it was oral so now it's the books that matter but we we are there because we are great writers and we are going to have a big literature too we have already but in the future, you know that in 2000, uh, 200,000, we are going to be 4 billion. One third of the population in the world is going to be here. So, we have the future. And there are other things that it's happened in, in these days. You know, the big machine in the world is, is, is ex it, it's in here, in Africa. The big machine that the man construct is called SKPE, and is, it's a big telescope with many, many telescopes in all Africa, from, from the north to the south, uh, and it's the big machine that man ever construct. It's here. So we are the future, man. <laughs> thank you very much. That's a fantastic note to end on. Um, thank you very, very much for you, Judith. yeah for a really you great conversation. I want to see your films. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And there are many films of men. We need films of women. You know? We got lots of female filmmakers here. I'll round up some films, some good films, and, and share them with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone, so much.